How's it going guys? Welcome back to this demo RPG code along. And today we're just going to be working on yet another thing. So where we left off here, we now have the ability to add buffs. So uh, you might have noticed, uh, there's a few little announcements here. Uh, we're kind of going for a general system. Like we're trying to avoid really specific things that are super creative of our own that are set in stone we're we're trying to allow people to do their own thing like yeah we're going to have a base stats but as far as abilities go you can come up with your own abilities and add whatever you want you just have to stick to the system so we're more like designing a system for an rpg we're not we're, i'm trying to avoid making an actual game and and leave it up to someone else because you know, if I'm making my own creative game, I'm not going to uh, share that with everybody because uh, everybody would just copy the same game and it would lose its creativity. But as far as making a system where you can make your own things, that's typically what you need to do for this type of stuff anyway, is uh, make systems so that you can expand upon it and make your game how you want. All right. So hope that makes sense. Also, uh, I'm going to go as many episodes as I can manage. I'm thinking it's going to probably get to around 20, depending on the overall uh, popularity and success of this series. So far, I think it's doing pretty well for my channel and for this type of video. But uh, be sure to leave a like if you're really enjoying these and leave comments below of anything, any, any tips or what you're working on. I uh, really appreciate it. It really helps the series, really helps me out. And, uh, you know, there's other ways of supporting me monetarily if you want to, if you want to go the extra mile. But uh, that's not required or anything. Uh, just, uh, yeah, I wanted to throw that all out there. Okay, so let's get into it. So I took a, few, a day off yesterday to think about this. I started to record it, and then I realized maybe I don't want to do equipment this way. So it, it took a little, a little thinking. Because uh, I was looking at the stat block, and I was thinking, you know, we are retyping this over and over. This strength, intellect, armor, uh, agility, intellect, armor, res, uh, we're typing once here, we're typing it once here. Uh, anywhere we kind of have the same block again, we got it once again here. So maybe we want this to be its own thing, and we'll overload some operators to work on it. Uh, because, yeah, well, this is a stat block. Uh, maybe we want something like a, like core stats, I'm thinking. Uh, maybe it should be its own class, but I'm just going to put it above stat block for now. Because we're going to use this for the equipment, too. Because your equipment, you know, it's mainly going to modify armor and element resistance. But it could also modify strength and elect agility if it's, like, magical or something. Enhances your abilities. After all, this is, in theory, uh, some sort of template for any kind of RPG and whatever you want to do uh, in general should be capable with the stats and stuff like that. Uh, what do we want to call this? Well, we already have a stat block, so we don't really want to say that again, but I think it makes sense to say something like core stats. I like core stats. Yeah, I guess that works fine. And we'll just take this and put it here and just uh, take all this base off of it. And now what we can do is we can implement core stats. But we want to overload a few operators here too. That way we can uh, add them together. Like we could say a plus equals. Uh, so let's see. Operators. Now operators have the syntax of, well, return type. We'll change that. It's uh, not going to be void. But operator it's plus equals. And then whatever it ends up doing. So... This way we can just add two of them together. We need like a, a left hand side and a right hand side. Uh, and it needs to be this variable for stats uh, by reference, right hand side. And we need to return a reference to four stats. So a little, a little operator. We're going to work on these uh, operators a little bit here and uh, just keep prepping this up now um i've i've done this slightly wrong right uh, but that's fine we could just go look these up now there's a lot of info out there on these um but you know the point is you're never going to remember every single thing you can do in a language you're always going to need to look stuff up so don't be afraid to just take a moment and uh and look it up it's not that big of a deal 
let's see. Here's a good one. So uh, this is kind of an old answer, but it has the most upvotes. So it's pr and it has a check mark, so it probably works. So we can give it a try. And let's just observe. So they got operator plus equals, and they have a right hand side. Okay, so we don't need the left hand side. The left hand side is assumed uh, already. So we just go like that. And it looks like they have const because we're not going to change the right hand side. We're changing the left hand side. There we go. Just get that split on this side. But as you can see, yes, we're returning uh, whatever it is. So their class or struct in this case is called num, uh, or just core stats. Uh, but returning by reference, that way you get the actual thing returned. Uh, this way you can concatenate them get together and stuff. Um, and then we got the operator. We got plus equals. We're also going to be doing a plus equals one for when we add to the stats. And uh, let's just put const here. That way they can't accidentally change the right hand side. And we're going to say this. Now we got to do this for all of them. Uh, so we're going to say like this dot strength plus equals right hand side dot strength. And we need to do this for everything. Now this is a uh, pointer to this class. Uh, so yeah, we just need to populate these down and just uh, do a little copy paste action. So they're all filled out. And then we need to return it as a reference here. So we'll return star this, because this by default is a pointer to the class. So you need to dereference it. So it's the actual object. And then this turns it back into a reference uh, so that it's a reference to the class. That way we're not making copies. If you're if you're doing this sort of thing, you're going to return a copy of the class and it's not going to do what you expect. So you need to make sure you get that reference in there to make sure you're not copying the class. All right, and that should take care of it. Uh, and now we should really should test this. Now this brings up a point that I should do. Uh, we should be building tests for all the stuff we're doing. And that's sort of what we're doing. Like when we type stuff in main and get and test it out to see if it works, that's essentially our test. But in reality, what we should be doing is, well, I'm thinking we should be building all this stuff here as our game library, as like a static library, probably a static library, that'd be fine in this case. And then we should have a sub project for tests that literally just tests all the aspects of our library. And then we should have yet another sub project that is like the main runner game that does everything. And uh, yeah, I'm just throwing that out there because there's probably going to be an episode where we literally just do that. But for now, we're going to stick with our method of just building up stuff and testing out our new stuff in the main because that's uh, where we've been going and how we've been doing it. So I think this is the main operator we need. Now we could do some other operators uh, or we could do some other things. Let's look at our stat block again. So this main, this plus equals is the one we're using most frequently. So we're probably just going to leave it uh, for now since it's uh, the most frequent, but we could overload any of these really. Uh, we probably want a minus equals but uh, once again, we, we should also in here, we should be checking that things aren't going and wrapping to, to positive or negatives in any case, especially on the negative one. We want to make sure that's not happening. So how can we do that? Because, well, let's, let's go ahead and just copy this down. Control D. Uh, format this a little bit. There we go. And let's just make this one a minus equals minus and change all these symbols to minus equals. Oh, it's uh, doing it on the wrong stuff. We want to start here. Okay. Well, I guess we'll just manually type it and I'm going to line them up so that they're easy to modify here all at once. Um, this like, so, well, there we go. So uh, we want to check right down below that they're not wrapping to some giant number, basically. And the easiest way to check is, well, you've got this right hand side and you've got this left hand side. So you want to make sure it is lower 
than whatever it previously was, lower or equal. If it turns out that it is higher than what it was previously, you've done something wrong. That's that's going to be the main thing, and that's uh, that's an unsigned int. So we could just implement another one for stats, Tim, and we probably want an equals uh, equals this dot. Uh, yeah, it just equals this. We'll just make a copy of it here. So, just like so. Uh, but now we need an equals. So, equals should default to just doing exactly what you would expect it to do. Uh, so, we don't necessarily have to design the equals one. It should be already implemented for us, basically, at least in this version of C++. And let's see, what are we on? Let's go to properties here. And uh, we're on 14. 14 is fine. That's a, that's a default. We could go to 17 if we wanted. Maybe we will later. But uh, the point of getting that copy, you know, that this does make this function kind of slow and uh, not as good. But the whole point is we can now do some comparisons uh, down below. So we do our operation. And we basically want to say, we want to do a big if here and uh, just compare them all if this well we want to see if the new strength this dot strength if it is greater than that temp strength so uh, basically if we did a minus operation and it ended up being greater than what it was before we know it didn't go right we know that it went below zero and wrapped to a really big number because it's now greater so that, that's it. And in those cases, the only thing we want to do is just set it to zero. So we just say this dot strength equals zero. Unsigned zero. Okay. So that's it. We can just do that for all of them just to make sure that it didn't wrap incorrectly. And that should prevent some bugs in the future. Now we're just going to copy all of these. And uh, we'll run a test of this here in a second just to see how it goes. So there we go. If any of them ended up greater than what they were previously, we are just going to set them to zero. And that should handle all those edge cases of that. I'm just going to line these up. Uh, not something you have to do. I wonder if the auto formatting breaks this nice lineup. Yeah, it does. Ah, that's kind of annoying. Um, but uh, we'll just we'll just deal with it. We're actually done with this. Uh, so yeah, this function looks good. Now we could do a similar thing here for if it wraps above the highest possible unsigned int, but that's like billions, you know? There's uh, That's not gonna happen as often. So it's such a, you know, if we were doing like a real extreme, can't ever have an error, we're going to Mars with this software, we probably would, but that case is gonna be really rare because our numbers are just not gonna get that big in this game, so we're going to not worry about that so much but now we have this core stats that we can implement and we can do some basic operations on it that we've been doing except now we can shortcut it all because we have this all set up so let's go ahead and just do that here we'll take this stat type and we'll just call it core stats now and we're just going to call it base stats and now uh, all these capitals, this kind of, you know, we're, we got a capital case here and we got a capital case here in our name. And it's going to be a little confusing. So let's camel case this one to base stats. That way we know it's uh, what kind of variable it is just by looking at it a little more. All right. And then we want to do a similar thing. Well, first of all, let's, uh, let's go ahead and just default all these to zero. Uh, just with uh, this equals zero real quick here. And that way they, they default instructs to zero. And collapse that down. And that way we don't have to do this equals zero here. It's just, yeah, they always start at zero. And that's that's fine, unless we're going to instantiate them otherwise. And then we want to do the same thing here. Core stats. Uh, total stats. Uh, oh, it's from buffs. So... We want uh, core stats. Uh, yeah, let's do total stats from buffs. 
There we go. Uh, we'll load case that. And there we've got those now. So we've got our base stats, our total stats, and we need to put them together to get all the stats. Uh, so maybe, you know, I don't actually like this total word after all. Um, stats from buffs is clearer. Because I feel like when you put total in there, it somewhat implies that it's already added the base, being a total and all. So base, and then stats from buffs, and that should be good enough. It's also, there also might be a case for like putting the stats for buffs somewhere else. So I, I don't necessarily want to undo the work we already did from last episode. So I'm going to leave it for now. But I was sort of thinking maybe we do the adding of the buffs in the player character rather than in the stat block. But uh, it's, it's fine for now. All right. So now that core of stats is public, we can, we can just pop it in here as needed. And we've got some defaults here uh, for this one, and it's now a little confused. So, uh, yeah, we're going to have to do this sort of thing. Oh, and, and just put dot in whatever it is. Like, we're just going to have to take these. Now, we could default construct it from just one of the types uh, with another constructor where they have to fill out the stat block and then they pass it in. So we're going to add that functionality in here just for ease of use. Uh, but as you can see, these are going to default to, to ones. So maybe it actually makes sense to default these to ones here uh, on the core stats. Uh, that way we just don't want zero to be a viable stat starting stat so like what happens if they have zero strength or intellect maybe we should actually uh say it can't go below one uh maybe we should say it can't be zero uh, but uh because that might mess up our calculations like if we try to do some multiplication with these stats in mind if there's zero it's just going to turn everything into zeros and that might not be what we want so we're going to have to think about that a little but uh, for now, we're just going to go with it and leave it how it is, basically. So uh, we'll, we'll think about that when we start calculating more. But for now, I'm thinking it's probably fine. It's probably fine being, being zero. Now we have these get base. Do we want to just get the whole thing at once? Or do we want to uh, get the part of it that is relevant? So we're going to need to put a uh, base here and a dot. And now we can get rid of that word. So it looks, it looks pretty similar, but a little different. And it returns a stat type. Uh, base stats. You know, uh, we're kind of, the word stats is actually a little re redundant here because it's called core stats. And then base stats, just base, is clear enough, in my opinion. And that will cut us, it'll just save us a lot of little text there. Or anytime we need to, we don't want to be retyping stats. And so we already know it's a stat, because it's a core stat stat block. Yeah. Now that's pretty clear enough there. So there we can just do that. Just change these functions a little bit. And I'm just going to work on lining them up so that I can do a mass edit. Something I like to do. And uh, we should be able to just change all this. The old Alt Shift Select is really handy. And yeah, we'll just get these get these totals. And this one, of course, is just base stats from buffs. Uh, stats from Buffs. And we can shorten these up and take off all this from buffs here because that's now in the variable type or the variable name there, rather. And there we go. Looking, looking better already. And now we have to modify these and get these all straightened out. So, interesting thing going on here where, yeah, we're just going to keep working on these methods here. 
So we now have an increased stats that this is going to do the same thing. We can consider changing, uh, you know, making uh, just additional versions of these same functions that take the core stat so you can pass it all in at once. Uh, we might just go ahead and do that. But uh, yeah, let's go ahead and just go base on these. Uh, but you see, this uses plus equals, and we overloaded that. So we can do something super special here, super awesome, and just use our plus equals. Uh, however, the problem is we have all these ones individually, and uh, the rest are not. So that's, that's why we can't necessarily just do it like that. But let's go ahead and make another version of this function. Uh, that is useful, and that way the end user can use either. And we'll have this one bring in core stats, and uh, we'll just call it C, uh, or maybe CS. And this one can use the plus equals. Uh, we'll go base uh, plus equals CS, and that's all it needs to do. That handles everything because it forwards to uh, this function right here. So that's pretty cool. That makes it pretty simple. Uh, I saw a question just recently about uh, object-oriented programming versus data-oriented design. I might make a video on that at some point. I need to prepare a few things. But in general, what I would say is data-oriented design is where you keep your program as simple as possible and as things are uh, coming in and changing, you basically add them to lists or vectors, uh, and then you end up kind of constructing, you know, kind of this system right here is sort of reminiscent of data-oriented design because the end user can pass in whatever buffs they want, and it just passes them in here. And uh, it becomes designed more by data than it does by object oriented so that's uh, generally what people are talking about now this buff isn't very versatile so usually you want something even more versatile if you're doing that but uh that's just all i'll say on it for the moment i guess uh you know another example you could check out my uh game engine the public version of it it's just ancient archer uh you can find it on my channel or find it on my github that the way we do most of the functionality of the engine is based on lambdas that the end user passes in and they can design it however they want and that's sort of in also a data oriented design uh, except the data that you bring in is actually your own function so it's even more versatile uh yeah that's uh probably a pretty simplistic answer to that but we'll keep going all right, so we got that one, we got that one. Now we have this recalculate buffs. Oh boy, this is gonna be tricky. All right, we first wanna start with core stats. Right here, core stats. Temp, uh, well, well, temp total. Yeah, we'll just call it temp total. So we're gonna name all of these total and we're going to match case on this one because we don't want it to go find that everywhere in our file uh i guess we got to go minus equals on the whatever they're bringing in right whatever the debuff is so these buffs now Let's look at our buffs here. Uh, buffs, we want to have a base too. Let's go, so we gotta go over to buffs and we gotta change this. So this whole block here can now just be core stats. And we'll just call it buffed. Maybe buff stats, I don't know. I don't really wanna put the word buffed on there or stats on there again, but just uh, buffed sounds like a true or false, you know. 
Uh, it's just, I feel like it's more clear in this case to say buffed stats yeah, in our in our buff here. Uh, or maybe we'll just call it buffs. But uh, that, that then sounds like a vector of buffs or a list of buffs. So I guess buff stats is the best I'm coming up with here off the top of my head. Uh, and we'll capitalize it because the rest is. But now we need to worry about this constructor a little bit and how it works. Because we now need to say, well, the name's fine, the duration's fine, but the strength is now going to be buffed stats dot strength. And it doesn't particularly like this. So it might be because it hasn't compiled yet. We might, we might not be allowed to do it this way uh, with it being in a struct like that. So let's just bring it down here and uh, we'll just say buff stats dot strength equals str. So whatever they pass in. So we can do that for for all these, uh, let's just copy this down a few times and just use the power of copy pasta to bring all these down. And we'll clean it up here in a second. And there we go. So that works about the same. We, we might want a constructor version that allows, uh, and we'll probably do this uh, in a few other places, but uh, let's see, these are the same. Uh, maybe we'll change where this is debuff uh, and, and make it not on the end and just make it here before all of that. Now it's going to change the ordering of some of our other stuff too, but that's uh, not too big of a deal. And why doesn't it like this one? Oh, it's because uh, we've got compiler errors here and it hasn't populated down further. So, well, yeah, let's do the same thing here. And uh, the last part here, let's just take an actual uh, core stat. We'll call it CS again. And on this one, it's going to be about the same. Uh, we'll still set these just as we were before. Let's break to a new line here. And now in this block of code, we can just say, we can just use the equals operator equals CS. So it'll just equal whatever they come in. Yes. Uh, so, you know, that's one of the nice things about these simple structs is some of these operators are implied. Like you've noticed probably we've used the equal one in several places, yet we haven't written it. It's because it's, it's implied with the, the default. Like there's only four simple types or five simple types in here. So it it's smart enough. The compiler is smart enough to imply that if we say some core stat equals another one, that is just the only five variables in here. So that's a nice little thing we get going on there. All right. So I think we've got this worked out now. We've got a new constructor with this type. Uh, oh, we need to we need default constructors on this CS as well. Uh, I guess, does equal default work here? No, it doesn't. So that's going to be a little tricky. We need, uh, I guess we do need to overload the equals operator to say something here. Or if we pass it in like an integer or an unsigned in. Because uh, it knows how to accept itself, but it doesn't know how to accept uh, some default integer. So let's just do that real quick. That way we can support that default value. Core stats operator equals const. Uh, we'll just say stats type, and this will just set them all to the same thing. And uh, yeah, we'll just call it right hand side. Uh, return star this at the end. But basically all we want to do is just set them all equal to whatever uh, that right hand side is uh, equals operators here. But uh, now what we can do is just going back to our buffs here is this will now work where it should because this will just well, I guess we need it to be unsigned. Otherwise, it's confused. 
but this should uh, work off that that operator and know what to do. But we'll see if this compiles. I could be wrong. Maybe this is supported in a later version or something, but this should work since we now have it defined. Uh, I might need to hit compile first for that to uh, really understand what's going on there. Uh, we're probably going to have some errors because I'm mid-work here. Yeah, we got some uh, stuff here we still need to figure out. So uh, back in the stat block and recalculate buffs, we just need to work on these temp totals and all this stuff. And uh, basically just do some, some plus equals. Okay, so we've worked out the buffs. So we just need b dot buff stats. We need to use the uh, those operators on there, and then we don't have to write this all out over and over because it'll just defer to those uh, operators that we've defined. Uh, these ones here, and it'll just run these functions. So pretty interesting stuff. Very handy. What's the problem here? Uh, so what did we name this? We named this something else. Okay. So we just need to straighten this out. It's stats from buffs. Okay. And maybe we don't need stats in that variable name, but yeah, let's uh, let's actually take it off, lowercase that f, and just call this from buffs. I feel like that's pretty, pretty clear. All right, and let's keep working on these. Uh, this is fine. We got a new way to increase stats by bringing in some core stats. Uh, well, let's see what else we got. We got this uh, this buff system, and then we got some checkers. Now, uh, this we no longer need. Well, we want to take our total. Uh, just from buffs. So we can do away with all that. So from buffs is just going to equal whatever this temp total ended up being after going through all the buffs and debuffs. And uh, this here, just make sure it's not below zero. So I guess we still want that. Although uh, in reality with this minus equals, this should straighten it out anyway. And uh, yeah, it, it won't be able to be below zero based on the logic of these plus and minus that we're using. So we can get rid of all this code. It's now redundant. And there you can see we have cleaned up this recalculate buffs a lot. And if we delete even a few more lines, this is just a much cleaner function with this core stats struct all set up. So now that this core stats is set up, yeah, we may need to occasionally add a new operator to it. But overall, uh, this is going to be some nice code that we can just rely on for a long time and not have to basically do blocks like this too often. We're doing them in this case because, uh, you know, we want to be able to get them individually. Um, but we could even just return the whole core stats block and allow it, you know, and imply that the end user should be the one to uh, call the dot operator. Because we could do like a stat type or a core stats here. We could just do a return core stats get stat block or get core stats or something. You know, we could do that instead and just return this entire struct. But uh, I like the individual ones for now. I, that uh, I think that's fine. It's not too many lines. It's only 10 lines between both of them. So it's not going to save us a significant amount. And is a pretty, they're pretty clean functions on their own. There's not a ton going on in those. So yeah, unlike this recalculate buffs, it was a giant block of code. It was kind of hard to understand. But now just looking at this, it's pretty simple. We just get the total of all the buffs and uh, we set it to that. And that's, that's pretty easy to read now. Okay. At this point, you know, I wanted to do equipment today, but this has been a pretty important lesson. So let's just fix all the rest of the errors. And we'll call it a day. So it does. It looks like this overloaded operator here is just not working. It's just, uh, it, I guess you can't default value these 
with the overloaded operators. Uh, maybe there's a way to. If you know, leave a comment down below, or you're welcome to fix this over on GitHub and make a pull request. But it seems that this default value here doesn't work. And the thing about default values is they do have to be last. So since we have default values on some of these, we actually need to bring this core stats near the front. Uh, so if you're using this method, you do have to specify both the name and the core stats, and you can leave duration in the its debuff default. But that sort of breaks uh, this one, because this one, you can leave everything default uh, to zeros and just, uh, just give it a name. Yeah, I guess that works. I just don't like that they have different orders per. So I'm actually going to take all these and put them after name. Like so, basically so that it sort of matches the other functions. Uh, that's really the only reason. Just break a few lines there. But yeah, that uh, that looks fine. Let's go ahead and build this and just uh, keep addressing these errors. We got a identifier, unknown, unknown. Okay, so it doesn't know what core stats are. Now these come in from the stat block, but as I was talking about at the near the end of last episode, the order that you include matters very significantly when you're doing all headers like this. So we have to look at our main probably, and then our player character, and see what order they're coming in here, and uh, really analyze that. Or what we can do is we can just take this core stats and put it in its own file. And it's going to simplify those include problems. So we'll just do that. I copied all the code. I'm going to make a header file called uh, core stats. And it's just going to be this struct. So this way, it'll build on its own. We need to include types here. That way it knows about stat type. And that should take care of this undeclared unknown identifier problem, or at least some of them. Uh, but uh, no, we still have something, so we need, just need to address these. Why doesn't it like it here in this buff? So let's see. Oh, we need to include it. Sort of a no-brainer there, right? You know, we'll just include four stats before stat block there. Build again. See if it complains about anything. And nope, that's it. That's the only one. We got a success. We do need to take a look at our main again. Uh, none of these functions changed. Uh, we basically have just prepared things for ease of use later. So we can hit play. Everything still works. And we've just, uh, you know, made some nice functionality with these overloaded operators. And it's also a great example of how and when to use these. Because as you can see here, you know, we'll probably never touch this core stats again unless we're adding another stat and need to add or remove from all of them at once but in general our stat block is just very very it's a, it's a lot more simplified in general and it's going to be a lot easier to continue to work with and that's going to be really nice for when we add in other items and such all right well this episode i think is long enough so we will end it here and uh we'll work on more stuff in the next one so thank you for following along and I appreciate all of you guys and all the support. And uh, keep coding. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.